Ichthyosaurs Those marine reptiles renowned for their uncanny resemblance to dolphins and swordfish are known from the Triassic through Cretaceous periods and from hundreds of specimens. Their anatomy is so well understood due to dozens of specimens preserving the soft tissue outline of their body. It's how scientists know they had shark-like tail fins, gave birth to live young, and used countershading. However, despite all this, new specimens can continue to open the eyes of scientists about what was going on with their muscles and insides. A new fossil proves this by showing that one of the largest predatory ichthyosaurs to ever live carried around saw blade flippers to keep it quiet as it snuck up behind its prey. Let's take a look under the hood to see how this all works. The oceans have always been stuffed to the gills with the most bizarre and terrifying creatures on the planet. Today, it's full of animals so different looking to terrestrial life that they come off as aliens. But of course, those are invertebrates, and invertebrates have always looked weird. That's what you get when you have your skeleton on your outside, or have no skeleton at all. I'm talking about you, jellyfish. Most of the dangerous life forms that swim in the oceans, today and at almost any time in the geologic history of the Earth, have been vertebrates. You got your big bony fish and your big cartilaginous fish, but only some got to be as big as mosasaurs, pliosaurs, plesiosaurs, turtles, ichthyosaurs, or whales. In fact, it still seems as though the largest animal to ever live is the blue whale, with us today. Well, for now anyways. There were big predatory sharks and shark-adjacent cartilaginous fish prior to the advent of the Mesozoic era, but the largest marine reptiles to ever live showed up almost immediately after the Great Dying. Those would be the ichthyosaurs. The biggest ones were similar to sperm whales, sucking up small invertebrate prey by the truckload. However, the shark-shaped marine reptiles really caught their stride during the Jurassic period, when they became the dominant group of marine reptiles. Without the giant predatory mosasaurs of the Cretaceous, the ichthyosaurs were more or less free to take on some of the macro-predatory niches. Their major competition were large marine crocs and the pliosaurs, which evolved from the long-necked plesiosaurs they shared the seas with. Most ichthyosaurs were human-sized predators of fish and squid, but some grew to the size of orcas, like Temnodontosaurus. The Temnodontosaurus genus is known from early Jurassic rock strata eroding out of England, Scotland, and Germany. This means that its fossils are tied up with the history of the science of paleontology itself. One species, Platyodon, is technically the very first ichthyosaur scientifically described, and the first remains were found by Mary Anning's brother, and then Mary Anning went and found some more. It was originally considered a species of Ichthyosaurus, but over the centuries has found itself within the genus Temnodontosaurus. The biggest and nastiest species of Temnodontosaurus is probably Temnodontosaurus trigonodon, with a species name that references its bizarre triangular teeth. This species was the Orcasaur of the early Jurassic, with teeth capable of puncturing squid skin and reptile hide alike. They seem to have had enough bite power to prey upon other ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, and this isn't speculation either. There is literally a specimen of this species with three smaller ichthyosaurs, members of the Stenoterygius genus, in its belly. I mean, there were also squid hooks in there too, so it was a generalist hunter. Thanks to a bunch of ichthyosaur specimens preserving the impression of the body wall, some preserving impressions of internal anatomy, and of course some with unborn fetuses in their bodies, you could be excused for thinking almost everything is already known about these animals. However, a brand new, isolated specimen of a front flipper from a Temnodontosaurus proves that there are innumerous ways in which these fish lizards can surprise us with what they really looked like. An absolutely massive team of researchers led by Johan Lindgren and Dean Lomax published a paper in Nature in July of 2025 describing this thing. 
This is the front flipper, most likely from a Temnodontosaurus trigonodon. All the way back in 2009, workers were blasting rock for the construction of a road in Daltenhausen, Germany, that just so happened to be right through an outcrop of dark limestone belonging to the Posidonia Shale, which dates to between the early and late Toarchean stage of the early Jurassic Epoch, roughly 183 to 178 million years ago. Fossil collector Georg Gultz did some prospecting among the workers' rubble and stumbled upon the chunked up bits of this ichthyosaur flipper. Gultz thought they were of some importance since there seemed to be some outline of the flipper around the bones. So he took his chunks five hours to marine reptile expert Sven Zaks of Natural History Museum of Bielefeld for safekeeping and examination. Sachs and others at the museum reassembled the chunks and prepared the rocky matrix away from the bones and fleshy impressions and returned it to the collections. As with most fossils, it took a few years before they were given a more thorough once over, and Sachs realized the importance of this jigsaw puzzle. The specimen was taken to be CT scanned in 2021, and this scan revealed that the specimen contained a lot more bones than were visible, so they did some more preparation to reveal those bones. The meter-long specimen is the very end of the front flipper containing most of the tips of the four fingers, which in ichthyosaurs are smooshed and flattened into bizarre polygonal bones that seem to more or less lock together. As you can see, the fleshy outline surrounds the bones, but it also extends well beyond the end of the bones. This is unusual because, uh, well, this has literally never been seen before. It could mean that all ichthyosaurs had longer fins than their skeletons alone can tell you, or it could be unique to this genus, species, or group of ichthyosaurs. The finger bones are tightly packed closer to the base of the hand, but this flipper shows that they become less tight the further along the flipper. Another thing no one has seen before. Most of the time, ichthyosaur skeletons are reconstructed to have very tight flipper bones in order to form the entirety of the flipper. The authors hypothesized that the tips of the fingers may have had a cartilaginous system that helped support the extended fleshy tip of this flipper. They shot the specimen under regular, polarized, and ultraviolet light to see what types of material were involved with the structure of the flipper. They found two major never-before-seen structures. One, on the outside of the flipper were stripes that went across the flipper from front to back and parallel to one another along the length of the flipper, like corduroy pants or something weird and quirky like that. The second is only visible if you glue your eyeballs to the trailing edge. Along the trailing edge of the flipper were teeny tiny millimeter scale spines lodged in the flipper and that created a protruding saw blade like edge to it. These spines were extra small and thin near the base of the flipper and then got longer and fatter near the middle of the flipper. In order to get an understanding of what all this means, the team conducted quite the thorough analysis. One of their analyses included making some histologic samples of the bone and skin. This involved cutting a section of the fossil, immersing it in resin, slicing that up, polishing it till it's transparent, mounting an ultra-thin section of that on a glass slide, and describing what was seen under the scope. Histologic samples showed how old the animal was at the time of death, subadult, but more importantly showed the various layers of flesh preserved. The histologic samples preserved several layers of dermis, corresponding directly and, as it should, to the epidermal and dermal layers seen in all other amniotes. Transmission electron microscopy was also used on some ultra-thin slides, revealing these melanophores that contain melanosomes, the organelles that hold pigment in living animals. Another analysis was FEG-SEM, or Field Emission Gun Scanning Electron Microscope, and EDX, or Energy Dispersive X-Ray Microanalysis. To do this, they had to demineralize the tiny splints that were in the trailing edge of the flipper. This was so they could try to see what type of stuff they were made of. These analyses found the spines to be similar to cartilage, specifically that found in sharks, but that they functioned more like osteoderms, 
lumps of bone that rest underneath the skin and are usually sites for large keratinous covers in all sorts of vertebrates, and mostly used for defensive armors. So the team came up with a new term for these novel structures, chondroderm. X-ray computed tomography, X-ray computed microtomography, and synchrotron radiation X-ray tomographic microscopy, or SRXTM, techniques were used to get a good image of how the chondroderms were constructed. This is the micro CT scan of it. This is the FEG SEM micrograph of the outside of the chondroderm, showing a granular texture. This image is the SRXTM rendering of the stuff in the chondroderm. Those yellow spots are higher density areas of phosphatization, which these chondroderms are, having been partially or wholly replaced by phosphates. The rest of these images were captured in the FEG SEM machine and show that the cartilage is made up of little dented nodules. Very weird. Another thing they did was TOF SIMS, or Time of Flight Secondary Ion Mass Spectrometry. This basically involves shooting a specimen with a beam of ions and recording the ions that bounce back. The speed they bounce back is recorded and it can tell you what elements and molecules are present in the sample. For the flipper, the team got back phosphates, eumelanin, and silica. One of the more interesting things the team did was computational fluid dynamics, using a computer program to test the shape of the flipper for how hydrodynamic it is. To no one's surprise, the new external texture, extended tip, and trailing toothed edge was found to improve the hydrodynamics of the flipper. The chondroderms helped to keep the flipper rigid, but allowed enough flexibility for the animal to keep the maneuverability it needed to zip around after squid and reptiles. The toothed trailing edge also seems to help reduce noise as the animal swishes around creating all sorts of vortices. This sort of thing has been proven in owl wings and humpback whale tails. The extended tip of the flipper is hypothesized to help allow the animal to more efficiently cruise. It didn't have to struggle flap its fore and hind flippers or tail like an idiot, only when it needed a huge sudden burst of speed. The fluid dynamics test also found that the flippers reduced noise best at low frequencies, which lines up pretty well with what they were hunting. Squid are more sensitive to low frequency sounds, so reducing that with the funky flippers makes a lot of sense. What's even more bonkers here is that people are already using these sorts of noise reducing external structures on anthropogenic sources of noise pollution near the ocean, like wind farms, ships, sonar, etc. The ichthyosaur flipper shows that nature was forcing these sorts of adaptations into existence long before we had the sapiens to figure it out. Wild. Lots of ichthyosaurs were squid suckers, so I'd imagine similar external adaptations may have been present, but there were some that specialized on fish or marine reptiles. Maybe this sort of adaptation is universally useful for all prey items, or even staying silent around predators, and therefore it was a feature across all ichthyosaurs. Only more fossils will tell that tale. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.